Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today's viewer request is from Daniel Cortese. He says, I was wondering if you could do a video in sea power of the Soviet Alpha class submarine against American ships and subs of the time. I'm curious because the Alpha could outrun the American anti-submarine torpedo the Mark 46. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to look at the Alpha and what made it so dangerous during the Cold War. Also, the weapons that would fight against it, the Mark 46 and the Mark 48 torpedoes and why they had to change in response to the threat of the Alpha. So first, let's look at the Alpha. It was a small, lightweight, intercept, nuclear-powered submarine. It was designed to stay in or around naval bases and charge out at high speeds to intercept hostile incursions. It was in service 1971 to 1996. Eight were planned and seven were completed. The Alpha had a unique design among other submarines. In addition to the revolutionary use of titanium for its hull, obviously titanium was widely available in Russia, it used a powerful lead bismuth liquid metal called reactor, which greatly reduced the size of the reactor compared to conventional water designs, thus reducing the overall size of the submarine and allowing for very high speeds, up to 41 knots submerged, making it the second fastest submarine of all time. This, combined with other reports, created some alarm in the US Navy and prompted the rapid development of the Mark 48 ADCAP or Advanced Capability Upgrade Program to keep pace. Also, the creation of the high-speed Spearfish torpedo by the Royal Navy was a response to the Alpha. NATO were also worried about the Alpha's exceptional dive depth of over 3,000 feet allowed by its special hull. This would put it out of depth of all contemporary torpedoes. Fortunately for NATO, this depth turned out to be a myth, the actual achievable depth being a much more mortal 1,300 to 1,600 feet. It should be noted that the accolade of the world's fastest submarine went to the PAPA or the K222. The PAPA preceded the Alpha by three years and acted as a technology demonstrator. Only one was built. Next, let's look at the torpedoes that would have been fighting against the Alpha. First, the lightweight Mark 46 anti-submarine warfare torpedo, carried by pretty much all US escort ships during the Cold War. It entered service 1963 and has been continuously upgraded. There are seven main variants. Over 26 1,000 Mark 46s have been produced. The range is about 12,000 yards or about 8 miles. Maximum claim depth of over 1,200 feet. Its maximum speed is 40 to 45 knots depending on the variant, the near tip being the fastest variant. Its guidance is active or passive active acoustic homing. Then there's the heavyweight American torpedo, the Mark 48, carried by various classes of submarine. The Mark 48 ended service 1967. There were seven main variants and many more sub-variants. More than 3,000 Mark 48s were built. It has a maximum depth of 2,500 feet and the fastest variant had a max speed of 55 knots. And its guidance is, quote, an advanced sonar system. Today we're going to run an exercise. In fact, we're going to say that in our role play, the Cold War has actually ended in the mid-70s. The Soviets and the Americans are now friends. It's just easier for me to do the role play like this. And they're running a joint exercise. A US carrier group is escorted by a Kid Destroyer as a picket and a Los Angeles class here. The Alpha has been in Mamansk here charged towards the hostiles at 41 knots now has gone slow and quiet and is going to attack them first she's going to attack the kids so now in real life the american vessels would almost certainly hear the alpha before she heard them the alphas and most soviet submarines of the time were notoriously loud due to their design but today we're going to pretend that she can sneak up on them. So she has two types of torpedo, a 5365K, which is a wake homing anti-surface torpedo, 10 miles range. Uh, also six set 65s, which are ASW torpedoes, active sonar homing, range eight miles. So we need to get within 10 miles of the kid to uh, shoot at it. In fact, we want to get closer. I've always been taught not to fire at the max range of your torpedo because it lowers the chance of hitting massively instead you want to go about 65 percent of its range i should say when i started playing sea power i knew very little about submarines i've since read 
four books, uh, two Royal Navy, one US and one Soviet Cold War submarine book. So I'm learning about it fairly rapidly or have done. I'm currently below the thermal layer. I'm not going to worry about detection today. Let's just keep things simple. So I'm going to check the range. OK, we're at eight miles. Let's just close a little bit closer. OK, I think that will do. Let's uh, pop him. We need to go above the layer so that we can actually detect him. Up we go. Obviously, there's a thermal layer which uh, separates above and below, and sound really struggles to penetrate through it. All right, depth 340 feet. That's going to do. We're going to have a shot at him with four of our wake homing torpedoes. Pop and go. How terrifying does that look? All right, the sonar operator on the American ship immediately hears what's happening. He knows exactly where it's happening, or roughly where it's happening, so he can respond with his Mark 46. He's going to send four Mark 46s out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lightweight torpedoes. Out he goes. Max range around eight miles. And Alpha hears that those torpedoes have been sent, so he's going to run away. Now, in a typical of... Uh, torpedo evasion you wouldn't run away from them uh, you would uh, noisemaker you would turn normal either left 90 degrees or right 90 degrees and dive to maximum depth but we're not going to do that we're just trying to prove a point today so we're going to run away from them and see if we can outrun them so we're going to turn around turn anti-cavitation off we're going to go max speed and we're going to speed up now this was alluding to what Daniel said in his request that this was so fast it could literally outrun torpedoes you didn't even need to bother evading torpedoes traveling at 45 knots so that's the uh, one of the fast variants submarine 41 knots so that's delta of only four knots in fact why don't we take the pp and uh, see if we can go up to periscope depth so escaping while going up which is well unheard of as far as i'm aware Let's see what happens <laughs> maybe that's a little bit too much no we can look at that 41 knots. I could even put the periscope up. Shall I do that? Where is it? Periscope. <laughs> Running away. Yeah, you wouldn't do this in real life, obviously, by the way. But just proving a point. Running away from Mark 46s with my periscope up, which at this speed would probably snap off, to be honest. But torpedoes popping along at 45 knots. They're small, obviously, lightweight to fit in uh, areas of the ship, which means they don't carry much fuel, which means they can't go very far. Six miles away, very slowly catching up. Oh, God, I forgot about the ship. Sorry, viewers. Run. Flank speed. Noisemaker. Uh, yeah, that's not going to escape now, is it? Doesn't matter. Training exercise, viewers. Training exercise. How fast are they? Yeah, they're 45 knots. Oh, you never know. So when it comes to evading wake homers, they're not looking for the ship. They're looking for the wake. We've got to try and keep our wake out of the sensor of these, of these torpedoes. You never know. We might escape. Are they going to pick up our wake? Are they going to pick up our wake? They have pressure sensors in them which detect disturbance in the water, i.e. the wake of the ship. They've detected us. Try to turn over here. I don't know why I put a noisemaker out. Right? It won't make any difference at all. Just force of habit. I suggest we probably won't escape. Let's check the submarine. 41 knots still. Being stupid. Uh, these guys have turned their homers on. I said they've probably got very little chance. The excitement is right here. Can they avoid these wake homers? So what they do is they detect the pressure boundary of the wake and trying to stay in the lower pressure of the wake and they're going to bounce left and right within the wake you can see they're bouncing in my wake which spreads out in a fan shape but i'm trying to fool them now <clears throat> excuse me like a sort of crisscrossing my wake although i'm actually probably just going to try and outrun them kinematically now because they have to bounce around in the wake they sort of kind of bounce left and right and they have an inefficient uh, path whereas i can have an efficient path it's like change to there maybe how are my torpedoes doing? Absolutely terribly. How am I doing? Absolutely wonderfully. Maybe we should be a bit more sensible now. Put that down. Back down to, uh, where is it? Shallow, uh, above layer. And they're dead. The Mark 46s have all run out of juice. How about that? We can get cavitation back on. We can go hunting. Uh, go look for that LA. Will we defeat it? Will we? Uh, just for the fun. Let's send some noisemakers out. Okay, these two have gone outside of my wake now. They are forever lost. They can't find that wake again. Once they're out of it, they can't find it. These two are still within my wake. Do I dare put another bend in my wake? I think I'm just going to try and outrun them kinematically now. 
we win! Get some! Right, next, a Alpha is going to try and take on the LA. Now, the LA in real life would win this fight, um, or should I say win the detection fight, because it's much quieter design, has a better sonar fit. It would detect the loud Alpha at quite a distance, but we don't care about that. That's not what we're doing today. We're role-playing what if the Alpha snuck up on the LA. So, we're going to charge towards her. In fact, we probably wouldn't charge towards her either. What we would do, if we could detect the LA, which has happened many times in real life from Soviet submarines, is, well, what they would do is they would run a string of uh, listening, uh, acoustic listening devices uh, called an array out the back. They would sit very slowly and they would listen and they could hear this guy if he was moving fairly fast. And then they would position themselves ahead of the American, stay quiet and still wait for the American to pass and they would sneak up behind them and use uh, a phenomenon called the, uh, the baffling of the American submarine to stay hidden in those baffles uh, where it's much harder for the American to detect which is why a submarine never goes straight and long for a long time it always turns round on itself to quote clear its baffles and even with all the modern technology of 2025, they still have to do that. It's kind of amazing, really, how little submarine warfare has developed in a way. Anyway, I'm gabbing on now and uh, getting off topic. So, but we're pretending, what if it's uh, snuck up in the sky? Well, let's check the weapon it has. Set 65 with a range of 8 miles. Again, you don't really fire at 8 miles. You fire at 65% of that. So let's get a pop on. I love doing submarine warfare and a lot of you ask for submarine videos viewers and I could make these all day, I honestly could, and I could get some submarine experts from YouTube like we've done with the battleships and stuff. The problem is it's hard to get you guys to watch it. If I can't get enough views, I can't do it. It's as simple as that. I can't afford to do it. I don't have a solution for that, so it is what it is. <clears throat> Ten miles. And that's six miles and that will probably do... I mean, we can pretend that the Alpha, in this case, was just sitting lying in wait um, and the Americans just suddenly stumbled across it. So, uh, let's have a pop at the American. Are our tubes uh, ready? Yes, they are. Let's pop four of these bad boys at him. Get some. Rah. All right, now the sonar operators have immediately detected the launch because they're very loud. They know pretty much where that Alpha is. Uh, they're going to launch a response of Mark 48, uh, which I should say is in its pre-ADCAP variant, so this is before it was upgraded to actually fight the Alpha per se. That's not technically correct because the Mod 4 was, but close enough. Uh, so this has a max uh, speed of 50 knots and a max range of 20 miles. So even back here, a heavyweight Mark 48 could do 20 miles. It's quite an astonishing weapon. Um, four of those. I think she has four tubes, the LA, from memory. Uh, pop. Get some. All right, um, let's get on it, shall we? So, the Alpha, here's that she's been shot at now. She's, she's going to use her speed to try and run away. So, uh, so again, a proper way. Well, let's do proper evasion from the American first. So, once the missiles are out, torpedoes are out, which they are, first thing you can do is your noisemaker. You turn normal to the incoming direction, which is going to be either there or over here, and you get to maximum speed and you get to maximum depth. You're going to kinematically beat it and get out of its detection cone before it turns its homer on. So that should be enough to beat those uh, pesky missiles. The Alpha, though, is going to, to prove our concept, is going to turn all the way around and run away and try and beat it with pure speed. So speed and power, speed and power, flank ahead. Don't need a noisemaker because we're beating it kinematically. And let's see what 50 knot heavyweight Mark 48 can do. So Los Angeles rely, relying on a lateral translation and some... Uh, Oh, I've got mosses. I didn't realise it had moss. Uh, but the tubes are busy, so we can't use them. Uh, that's a decoy. Decoy torpedoes. They're super cool. Alpha has pretty much turned round. Smashing it at 40 knots. Another reason why uh, a submarine may suddenly turn around 180 degrees, as well as counter-deception viewers, is um, a, a, not common, but a thing that did happen on both sides, is torpedoes, amazingly, despite how much money goes into developing them can actually go hot can remember the cursed submarine blew itself up uh, they can actually turn themselves on and activate within the submarine before they're fired uh, if that happens during the cold war the best way to nullify that is not to sort of press a button on it or something they had to turn the submarine around and what that did is activated a failsafe system in the torpedo because if the torpedo turns around against its own mothership when it had been fired it would cancel itself and so you'd suddenly do a quick hard stop and a turn as quickly as you can and actually kill some submarines because some submarines when you turn maximum speed maximum turn you actually lose control 
and go too low and, and, and blow up. There's so many amazing stories I've read about. Anyway, sorry. The American is now at the bottom of the uh, Baltic. Uh, Barons, and there is no way these 65s are going to find it when they do turn their seeker on at a pre preset distance. The bad thing about the LAs is cut the wire, the guidance wire to this guy, but it doesn't matter. You matter you don't need it right that's it uh mark 48s are oh they're down to 40 knots well there you go they haven't to at this point they're doing 40 knots that's just what they do in their travel these guys are 40 knots and that was a fairly close shot that was probably um five miles probably they've turned oh i see it's because we cut the uh cord fairly early that's where they've gone active ah uh, yeah so because we cut the wire fairly early on it looks like they've gone active early in fact i don't know if that's why viewers i may need your help at this point either way it's what would be done because this la assuming being shot at she's not going to stick around she's going to she's going to turn and run even if she has to cut her wires and i imagine alpha is going to beat those 48 pretty easily 4.5 miles they can't catch up i want to run no oh no no you stopped no don't stop don't stop don't stop trust me go 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 faster 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 he stopped. That was silly. Let's see if he can start up again and still beat the missiles. But they're following him. Yeah, he's getting away. I'm going to claim that it's defeated. Uh, there's one more test I want to run. Uh, due to uh, lack of time, basically. I'm just. This is the first time I've done this. I'm doing it live. So let's just do another attack. In we go. I just want to do it without cutting the American wires. So this time, the American's going to spot the Russian before the other way around. Put him down to a sensible attack speed. Something like that. Be quiet. All right, so we're getting about six miles now. The American has detected the Soviet. Well within range. There's massive range of, um, uh, whatever, 20 miles. Fire. Soviet detects the threat. Runs. Again, purely with speed. Not trying to uh, defeat it properly like we saw with the American. So maximum speed. Go, 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 go. Can we beat it with just speed without... Cutting the wire without them going active. Let's see. Turn alpha turn. So the nine knots faster. I'm gonna speed this guy up just to make sure the wire doesn't get too long. Obviously they stay on wire guidance and then they go uh, pit bull when the wire's cut and or when they reach a certain point. All right, there are 50 knots this time. Alpha's at 41 knots. He's gonna go absolutely balls to the wall. Go go go. They are four and a half miles. We are maximum chat. Let's even go a little bit faster down low. Uh, we cannot. They're coming for us. Still max chat, 50 knots. I reiterate, because I know you're all going to be shouting at your screens. Yes, I know this isn't how you beat torpedoes, but I'm trying to prove a point here. LA, keep it on wire. Mm-hmm. Beat them kinematically. Outrun some amazing Mark 48, 50 knot, 20 mile missiles. Well, that shows the amazing speed of the Alpha. You don't even need to bother dodging. You just run away. I must admit I got a bit carried away there and a bit off topic, viewers. But it shows why Mark 46 can be beaten by Alpha pretty easily just by running away. Old Mark 48 can be beaten by Alpha pretty easily in the 1980s, I think. ADCAP was created. Advanced capability, uh, which is a generalization of an increase in capability of the Mark 46s in the Mod 4 Plus, I believe, or Mark Mod 5, I forget now. What does that do? It, in, it increases the performance of the Mark 48 torpedo massively to give extra range, about 30 miles it was. So you can see just by the extra range, it would have caught me up eventually, even if I tried to run away. Obviously, anti countermeasure and homing abilities were in increased as well during anti cap. Um, but that's why, uh, what I was trying to show in this video, why they had to create it to beat this uh, amazing submarine. Of which, uh, disappointingly, only seven were built, but so be it. I believe that answers what you asked. I hope it was enjoyable. It was nice to do a bit of submarines for once, and I'll see you later.